my name is Taylor Morgan, and today I'll be interviewing Professor Phil Morgan, or Dad, from the Faculty of Education and Arts at the University of Newcastle. So, Dad, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, thanks, Tay. I was born in Deneloquin. Uh, I think it was a Tuesday morning around 8.40am. Uh, my mu- Sorry, Dad, can we skip forward to the part about when you started in university? Okay, sure, fair enough, yep, sure. Well, you know what? It goes as far back as 1992, which is like, was that 28 years ago? And I'm only 40-ish, it's a big part of my life, (laughs) ish, ish. So um, I've done my undergraduate degree, my PhD, all the way through to professor at the University of Newcastle. And some people say, well, that's, shouldn't you be moving around? But I love the university and still do. So what degree did you study at the university? I wanted to, always wanted to be a PE teacher, but people were saying, oh no, you should do a physio degree, you'd love that. So it wasn't at University of Newcastle yet, so I was going to do a Bachelor of Arts for a year, then switch over to physio when it came to Newcastle. And I um, wasn't really sure still what I wanted to do. And I chose four subjects, and one of them I chose was philosophy. And do you know why I chose that? Um, I haven't told you this either, but um, because the abbreviation, the subject code was Phil 101. <laughs> And I thought that was a good message. Dad tip one, don't choose subjects based on the abbreviation matching your name. So I ended up uh, taking the advice of, of my mum actually, who was like, you need to be outside. I was an active, love sports and exercise sort of kid. And so I, yeah, it still are, exactly. So I transferred to a Bachelor of Health and Physical Education, best decision I'd ever made. Dad tip, follow your heart, do things you love, find a career you enjoy. Um, and that was fantastic. Didn't get a job out of uni, but I got nominated for a Rhodes Scholarship at Oxford, which is a really great opportunity. And I guess what a PhD is called at Oxford? DPhil. So <laughs> I was a bit wary. Yeah, it could have been. So, but I didn't get it. I missed out. That's okay. Resume. Came back and did a PhD in education at the University of Newcastle. Doing that research project made me realise the impact you can have through, through research and how important it is. What is your research focused on now and why is it important? Yeah, sure, so my PhD was in focusing on improving primary school health and physical education, but I've kind of transferred with a, with a greater focus on promoting family physical activity and healthy eating, but also understanding what influences families and what are the best strategies to advise families to be more active and to eat healthily. And this is just so important, firstly, because how important Um, optimal dietary and physical activity behaviours are for our physical and mental health but do you realise if you looked at families in terms of their weight status, how many fruit and veggies they eat, their physical activity um, levels, that it'd be less than 1% of the Australian population would meet the actual guidelines for those. So we live in an environment at the moment, it's obesity promoting, activity sapping, that's really challenging, it promotes um, kilojoule dense nutrient poor quality foods and they're really accessible so it is actually a huge challenge people say you're just trying to get families active that sounds pretty easy but understanding the psychology how to motivate families how to how to give them the knowledge and skills how to give them the evidence-based strategies that can make a huge difference in not only their physical activity levels and health eating but the quality of life so we realized that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach and targeted programs were really important so we've explored the, like, the differential impact of targeting different family members. So we've done tar- developed and evaluated targeted programs for families, whatever your family unit is, for mums and daughters, for um, dads and daughters, as you know. Um, and, uh, and when we started doing this work with fathers, we realised that fathers are just not involved in parenting programs. Internationally, we did a review and found that of all the parenting programs ever done in this field, 6% of participants are dads. So they play a unique and independent role. So we've done lots of work with fathers. So we've done Healthy Dads, Healthy Kids. I think you've done all these programs. And Dads with Sons and Daughters, promoting healthy eating and activity. And that's been adapted in the UK. Um, We've done a feasibility trial with Hispanic fathers in the US, which is really exciting. It was amazing. And we've just found out we were successful in getting a grant to adapt it in Scottish prisons with incarcerated fathers. And we've also got Healthy Youngsters, Healthy Dads, which is for preschool age children. And we've got our Daughters and Dads Active and Empowered program, which came out of the University of Newcastle. We've now got a partnership we're rolling out across um, New South Wales and doing sports-specific variants. We've just done Daughters and Dads Cricket. We've 
partnered with Women in Sport um, in the UK to do uh, to roll out with English football clubs. So just some amazing development showing the real need and impact that it can have. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, it's obviously a really challenging time um, in everyone's lives at the moment. So um, what role can physical activity and exercise play? Well, this, this is really challenging times and everyone's got different contexts and need to filter this information, but physical activity is just so important. Um, if you look at even the percentage of the population meeting physical activity levels at all ages, when you use objective measures, not just asking people how active they are, you know, pedometers and accelerometers, these sorts of gadgets, you know, it's usually around 10 to 20% would meet those guidelines for physical activity, um, and that's preschoolers, children, teenagers, adults, somewhere in between there. So most of the population don't meet physical activity levels and are so important. And there is overwhelming, incredible, remarkable evidence showing the association between being active and your holistic health. And that's from systematic reviews. So that means that it's not just one study. A group of researchers got, let's find every single study that's established the association between physical activity um, and heart disease, for example, or physical activity and depression. And so it's really good quality evidence so we can believe it's important. And this is at any life stage, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter um, whether you're a boy or a girl, what race, ethnicity, the association still remains strong. And if you look at physical activity, for example, for chronic disease risk reduction, so type 2 diabetes, or stroke or heart disease, being active means that you reduce the risk of those chronic diseases by 20 or 30%. And even mortality, even dying, 20 or 30%. Yeah, and if you look at if you look at fitness being aerobically fit, like heart and lung fitness, then the risk reductions for each of those chronic diseases doubles to 40 to 60 percent. So being fit as well, getting your heart rate up, being aerobically fit, is potent, hugely important. And then we, the mental health benefits of physical activity is also extremely important, reducing anxiety and stress and depression. And studies have shown it's even more crucial than than drugs, taking drugs for those particular ailments. Um, and another point, uh, I can't, oh, I just can't quite remember. Can you hold that for a second? Oh, that's right. Doing physical activity increases your blood flow, which impacts on your memory, attention and cognitive function. So I was able to remember that. But the research in this field of cognition is fascinating as well. Like it's exercise is a leading strategy for Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's just hugely important. But also there's social benefits and emotional benefits to being active and economic and educational and environmental. So finally, I'd just say, if you could take a pill that conferred all the health benefits of physical activity, it would be the most prescribed pill in the history of medicine, the biggest blockbuster in the, in the history of humanity. So hugely important. So Dad, what would be your best tips? I'd say get up, get out and get down. Get up, get out and get down. What does that mean? Sounds like it's the makings of a TikTok we could do. Get up, get up, get down. Maybe not. Okay. Um, it's actually get up, 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 get out and get down. So the first thing, get up, get your steps up. So internal physical activity is really important on most preferably all days of the week. Every step counts. People used to think, oh, I've got to exercise half an hour a day. And otherwise, if I can't find time for that, there's no point. Think of all those little bite-sized pieces of movement that you can do throughout the day. Because what we do know now is the benefits of activity are accumulated. So that five minute walk there, that 10 minute walk there, they add up as part of your benefit. So thinking about how you can increase the amount of movement you can get in a day overall. So a lot of people are like sitting all day and just doing one exercise bout and still think, oh, that's healthy. But just think about how you can increase your steps throughout the day. And there's a dose response relationship with physical activity. The more you do, the better. And it doesn't matter what form of movement it is. All the evidence we have for the benefits of physical activity, a lot of it is just simply for walking, so that's really accessible. So parking further away, thinking about, well, it's a 20 minute drive to somewhere, but I can drive 15 or you know, 18 minutes and then walk the rest of the way. Think about ways you can do that. So what is your favorite physical activity saying? Think of movement as an opportunity, not an inconvenience. Think about that. You get there and go, oh no, I can't get a park, this is ridiculous. So, hang on, park further away. Here's an opportunity for movement, given how many people meet physical activity guidelines, rather than an inconvenience. So movement is really important. Um, the second get up is getting your heart rate up. 
So doing some exercise sessions on most, preferably all days of the week as well. Some higher intensity aerobic fitness, which has independent health benefits. And there's just heaps of apps and YouTube clips and a smorgasbord of activities you can do. So heart rate up, steps up. And finally, I'd say to stand up. Let's just stand up now, I guess. To have, to break up prolonged bouts of sitting is a whole emerging science in this area of how important that is. And I'd say every 30 or 60 minutes, you need to stand up replace sitting with some light physical activity think of breaks you have when you're working put your phone away have your printer away from your office there's a whole range of ways we can increase opportunities to stand think of standing as an opportunity not an inconvenience Um, get out it's really fascinating studies have shown the benefits to exercising and being outside so depending on the situation try and get outside if you can exercise outside it's even better Exercising is really important. Exercising outside can give you additional benefit. And get down. So this is just a holistic approach to say, get your sleep right. It impacts on your activity levels and energy levels. Stretch, do yoga, Pilates, um, relax, and also socialise. So what advice would you give families to keep moving? Get up, 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 get out and get down they can apply that to children it's all applicable for families and actually uh, an interesting development as you know about is my film crew and sound crew and production team um, to help families at the moment we're releasing a YouTube channel called Family Movement with Professor Phil so I encourage people to subscribe to that we're going to release a lot of our content from all of our award-winning programs and it's pretty good fun making those so look out for those as well Um, but just five or six quick tips for families I would say be active together. It's called co-physical activity. In our studies that we've done, which is really fascinating, we've shown that families who are active together, it's not necessarily, oh, mum and dad go for for a run and kids are at home. So they're modelling the behaviour, but doing the activity together not only makes them more active, okay, that makes sense, but we found that it actually explains self-esteem in children and explains the quality of the relationship in families. So that's really powerful findings to show being active together brings families closer together and makes kids feel better about themselves. Pick physical activities you can enjoy. And one of the theories that we operationalise is called self-determination theory. Not to get too heavy, and it's primary tenets are autonomy, relatedness and competence. And that just means to increase motivation within families and for kids, autonomy, give them choice. What do you want to do today? Do you want to do a workout? Do you want to play soccer? Go for a walk? Give them options exactly. Um, relatedness, do it together. Do you want to do it with me? Do you want to, who do you want to do? do some one-on-one? Sounds good. And competence. Can you help them understand fitness technique and exercise technique like we've been doing at the back? How to do various exercises. How to do various sports skills is really important. And so in our YouTube channel, we will show how helping kids with sports skills, families have a role. Um, helping them with their exercise technique, they have a role. And doing some rough and tumble play, which is pretty fun. Um, and final couple of tips I would say is ink it don't think it that's one of my other favorite sayings write it down get your exercise and activity as a routine so it's locked in monitor your activity record it plan goals we could set and say okay we've got touch football or savo we're going to play and it's locked in and it becomes part of our routine where you don't have to slip into that day where you go oh, I'm not really feeling like it today so that's really important having screen rules Screen time rules, screens in the bedroom, screens before school are really important. Um, And finally, I would just say to families, don't forget the importance of free play, unstructured play for kids. Get outside and they can just be kids. So hope those tips were helpful. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for you, Tay. Great job. Hey, do you want to go do a workout? Let's go.